AMC rallies and the cry of Moaz beckons like a siren song, but what does the analysis say? Let's start today's video right away by just diving into AMC. I know everyone's going to be dying to see what's going on here with the stock. The price has suffered a very steep decline, formed a very pointy bottom here, we call this an atom bottom, came to an intermediate high, and then formed this nice shelf, and this would be an Eve bottom here. So we have an atom and Eve double bottom, and the price, when it passes and closes above this intermediate high, confirms the pattern, and that happened today. I wouldn't be too faithful to this pattern until I see a consecutive close above this intermediate high, but today does fit the bill. So, what's that mean? It means I'm putting a $25 price target on the chart, and my bias has been bearish for quite a while. And I gotta tell you, I don't, I, I personally don't know if we're gonna reach that $25 mark uh, in, in the near future. I think what's, what's the most likely is that's gonna take some time. There is gonna be a level of resistance up here at the bottom of this triangle, and this could lead into a waffling, a consolidation pattern, probably some sort of triangle before pushing up and into that triangle again and again finding resistance and consolidating again before moving higher. I think this is the bullish scenario and it's not totally unrealistic to wait for this to happen. I don't think that it's going to be Moaz, but I do think that some bullish price action is in the near future just based on this technical analysis. Now my bias is bearish still, and I'm, I'm just going to say that at the time being, I feel neutral. I want to say neutral, and here's why. Although we do have this fantastic double bottom, I'm a little wary that it might be a bull trap, that the price moved a little too high today, and that the real pattern we might be seeing, and this would make a lot more sense to me having followed the stock for well over a year now, is that this is probably an ascending triangle more than anything else. And that ascending triangle would have the price come back down in some sort of bottoming or like topping pattern, maybe some pipes, maybe a couple red days before seeing a bounce off of the bottom of this pattern. And this is really what I, I think is most likely is to see a pullback. It really depends what happens in the broader markets tomorrow. Today was a really good day. You see I have a heat map pulled up and this is the, SP, uh, the SPY. So I'm sorry, this is the S&P 500. So the heat map looks really green. And on green days like this in the market, AMC does very well. But when the market is poorly, AMC generally tanks with it, even though it's not even trading on that index. It's okay. So what do I think? I think that this consolidation pattern is the most likely, but we do have that double bottom forming up. I want to go back a little bit and let's talk about these double bottoms because we have seen this sort of pattern play out before. Here's an Adam and here's an Eve bottom. Again, you can see that the price did close above that intermediate high right before falling to pieces. And this pattern ended up being an ascending triangle. And as the price moved through the ascending triangle, it rejected at the top and then came out and just that would start that, that started the great dipping. And I think we are in an eerily similar position now where we have a double bottom, an Adam and Eve double bottom specifically, and that the price is starting to form and shape into an ascending triangle. So, very similar situation here. And I gotta tell you, I YOLO'd up here, I did, and I got absolutely burned. <laughs> and I'm still trying to recover from that loss. So far, I've been able to play the downside, but in day trading, I find I'm not quite profitable. I find myself to be breaking even. So I'm moving away from day trading and going more into long positions. I'm not going to be swing trading as much or day trading. I really want to invest my money. And what that involves is some fundamental analysis to pick stocks and then using my technical analysis as an aid to help me enter into those positions. And I actually entered into Sundial today, which surprised me too. I thought, wow, here's another stock that was way overvalued and we've been watching the price tank. But when I went and looked at the fundamentals, I saw an improving financial picture and the stock price absolutely battered and beaten to pieces. And I'll, I'll go over that too in today's video as well. So this is where I'm at with AMC. I am at neutral. I'm at neutral with AMC. I'm not bullish yet. I know I said I, I, that I wouldn't be bullish until the price passed one of my trend lines. Let me actually get that trend line pulled up. This one. I'm not bullish on AMC until the price breaks above this level. This is the level to close above before I say, hey, bullish reversal confirmed. I will say bullish reversal confirmed when the price breaks that trend. It is a powerful trend. 
You can see it starts way up here, and the price has touched it a couple times, but only forming these big tall wicks and then getting sent down lower. So we may even see another green day before encountering this line. But if we have a third strong day like this, and this is this is a crazy thing, but you know, if we see another 15% gain in a row and the price closes above this line, that is that that is going to signal a significant rise in the price. And the trend line analysis price target is going to be quite high. Now, what I'm looking for when I make my price targets off of these trend lines is the greatest distance between the price and the trend line. So I think that's gonna be over here. Let's see, what is that? $14? Yeah, that's gonna be our, our biggest. Yeah, this is this is the this is the price I'm gonna add to the breakout price in order to calculate the price target. And look at that. Look at that. What is that? $33, okay? If that trend line breaks and the confirmation is made and the price moves higher, the price target will be $33. And this double bottom has a price target of $25. So I think the bulls have the best case they've had since last year, okay? I'm not saying it's going to the moon, not yet. I think there's still a long road ahead for AMC. They still need to post multiple quarters earnings of profits they still have to have the popcorn business be profitable as well and i'm actually really excited that they announced the new uh, vice president position and i can't remember her name the new vp but i am really excited to see a face and a name and some real progress in that development of, of amc's story so moving forward i think there is some really good things going on but for the time being i'm still very very cautious of being overly optimistic but the $25 price target and the $33 price target are both a really good place to start. And, and if, if both those things carry out, I want to show you something else as well. I was talking to uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi in my Discord today, and, and they pointed out uh, this big wedge to me. Let's see, it starts up here, and is essentially defined by that trend line, right, at first. And then the second trend line is going to, it's kind of... It's a little loose, but it's, it's good. It's good. There's a touch point here, here, and then there's a touch point here. The price did open below it, but then pulled back up into the pattern. Okay, and what what this pattern is, is that this is a descending broadening wedge. And the price target would be the top of the pattern, which is up here towards $45. So AMC does have several chart patterns in play currently that could signal the price is ready to move higher. And the RSI is starting to move quite quite steeply and sharply to the upside. I do want to note though that the RSI is an indicator based on the average gains and so to have two big green average days like this is going to throw the RSI really really high. It would take a big red day to knock this thing down a ton but I, I, again I'm cautiously optimistic. Volume was good but it is relatively low compared to the other green days and this is a pretty big top but as you can see the price did close above it. Very interesting. We have a lot more green volume back here than, we've, than we had today. I guess you could say that the volume on green days is decreasing, but the volume has been decreasing overall. So, yeah, it's getting spicy. It's getting spicy. Cap's not feeling very bearish right now. Not very bearish at all. Unless, of course, the price forms this big pipe top, and then we see the price travel through the ascending triangle and break out to the downside, just like it did back here. But that hasn't happened yet, so I am moving from bearish to neutral. Uh, am I holding shares? Of course I'm holding shares. I'm always holding shares. But not on my trading account, because I don't like to have my payment for order flow always go to the market makers. <laughs> if, you if you buy your shares through computer share, they have an internal broker, and your buy goes straight onto the NICE, just straight onto the market. There's no going to the market maker, no one's gonna be slipping an order ahead of yours and profiting that, you know, that little itty bit that they'd like to shave off. Like basically pimp for order flow is like shaving coins, okay? And it's just not great. Uh, like I'll tolerate it for free trading on, on stocks that I think aren't being toyed with, so to speak. So that's where I'm at with AMC. I want, I want to move on and talk about some other tickers as well. You can see I have my watch list up here. These are all companies that I am currently long on, and I am long in Sundial now. They had that extension on being listed on the NASDAQ, which is really good. And let's just start there. Let's talk about Sundial. I know that was a very popular stock uh, during the meme stock craze phase. Um, so what happened? Well, <laughs> the price was at around $3, which is cool. But let's back out a little more. 
Yeah, you can see that the, the price climbed from 13 cents to $3. This is a tremendous rise. You can see the volume is really high through here as well. And the price did have these long, this long consolidation and a couple of peaks and RSI rising up on these volume spikes as well. But what's happened recently though that's really caught my eye is this recent downtrend showing this yellow line is broken. And you can see that the today's price action and it was a big move up. Typically, I would want to see the price come back down, confirm, and then move higher. But at 50 cents a share and going long, I'm comfortable just buying this company. I, I, I do think that the share price is not too high. The, the book to price ratio is good, right? It's, it's just over one. And the earnings per share is increasing. Now, they aren't making money, but the... They are beginning to, or on the cusp of, I think, making a profitable earnings. So I think some good earnings announcement news could really be good for this stock. And maybe we'll even see the price reach that dollar mark so it, it can continue to trade on the NASDAQ. I think that'd be really good. So I'm optimistic. I'm thinking about this company in terms of how many shares I have and not the price. And at this price, I can buy a lot of shares. So I went long 200 shares. And I, I do know that the cannabis industry, the legal cannabis industry, that the market was flush with product and that's been bad for prices and the pandemic's been bad, of course. But I think moving forward that this is going to be a good buy in the long term. OK, so that was Sundial. I'm, I'm going long on Sundial. I like it. How about Genprex? How did Genprex do today? Genprex also had a green day. Uh, and, and staying above this this new trend line now this is a hypothetical trend i really can't draw this trend line until we see a new high posted and what i mean by that is something above 360 which we haven't seen yet but to see the price beginning to move and respect that line is very good and the rsi is making a nice climb higher of course you can't see the volume because of how much volume there was on this day way back here but there are some investor conferences coming up this month and i think that might sway some some money into buying the stock i think they've had some really good news i think technically the stock is moving very very well breaking this long-term downtrend and this intermediate downtrend as well that the stock is holding on to the gains it posted earlier this week this is the fourth green day in a row i'm i'm feeling really optimistic about gemprex as well now let's talk about American Eagle Outfitters. I did want to touch this as well. Okay, and I, I never know what drawings I have pulled up, right? So let's draw on the daily drawings and let's have a look at this falling wedge. Beautiful, and the price did gap up and then touched and has moved up a little higher, but gave back some of those gains it made today. But now the RSI is still making its way above 50. Volume was low, so I'm not really calling this, this is a breakout technically. But I, I want to see a higher level of volume before I say, hey, confirm breakout, we're going to go higher, we're going to meet these price targets, and it's going to be like, woo, to bank. Not quite yet, we're still waiting, I think, for another positive signal before I, we see a, a good move on that breakout. I'm going to move into the one minute time frame here. Oh, whoops, that was the, the one minute drawings, which look like garbage. Uh, let's go this way, there we go. And one minute. Here, okay, this is what I'm talking about. You see the price come up and interact with that trend line, come down, and then push through it with strength. Very nice. Kind of a bump and run reversal up here, and then a steady downtrend, and then moving up higher into the close and closing ultimately above that falling wedge trend line. So I'm optimistic that American Eagle will continue this move higher. I do think that the company is, that the stock is trading at, at a good value, and I'm looking forward to their earnings too in March. So. That's how I feel about Gemprex, American Eagle, Sundial. Let's cover the SPY before we take off for the day. And it was just like a tight day, right? You can see that there's a gap here. And the price didn't move a whole lot, but it is good to see it moving a little higher. I am waiting, though, for the price to break out above this trend line, this internal trend line. Which didn't do. It did not do that today. But that's okay. Let's go ahead and back out a little bit to the daily chart. And yeah, you can see this big wedge I had and it broke down but into a reversal pattern it went higher and then we had this big broadening ascending wedge and it broke down, reached its target. So where are we now? Well, I think that the SPY could be in a precarious position. There is an opportunity to form an island bottom here. That is to say there is a level, there's a gap zone on either side of a 
price range that will form bottom, as to say, if the price were to move higher. So if I do see that form with a confirmation tomorrow with the market's moving higher, I'll go ahead and calculate that price target as well. But for the time being, I'm happy to say, uh, looks like a potential island bottom. I do want to though draw something else. I want to turn on the blank chart. And my blank chart's not so blank. <laughs> there is this big ascending, uh, broadening wedge and it, 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 the price is has still yet to cross this, this uh, medial line and that's going to be a very important thing. If the price can't move above this medial line and turns over and heads down, that's going to signal a partial rise, a bearish queue, and the, and the price could fall lower. And if the price does confirm below this pattern, the price target is way down here at the beginning of the pattern of $404. There has already been a downward breakout and a pullback. This is pretty typical. Bukowski says, hey, always expect that pullback. And sure enough, here it is. So now I'm watching for this partial rise. You never know. These two days here could turn into a double top on the short term. So keep an eye on that. But more closely, what I want to say is there could be a wedge in here too. There could be a wedge. Ooh, there could be a rising wedge. I think I'd want to draw it right there, like that. Alright, we have one, two, three touch points here, and two up here. This could be in a rising wedge, and this would be bearish as well. So, I'm, I'm not overly optimistic yet. I, I do think that, that there is a, an overall bear market that is coming. I believe that the value the the value of the uh, of many stocks has been inflated that is to say that the price is very very high and instead of having the market suffer a crash in prices which would hurt people's retirements account i believe the intent of the fed is to stimulate the economy and have the economy grow into those price ranges that the stocks are currently in and what that would do is it would enable companies to make more money, it would allow people to get more jobs, but the inflation is the problem. The inflation is the problem. So we're going to have some CPI numbers coming out pretty soon here. It's going to be a big economic week, I think, in terms of data. And we never know what the Fed's going to do with rates. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of things in motion. I, I think it's too early to be overly optimistic, even in AMC. And I'm currently just still focusing on my fundamental analysis, identifying the companies I believe are well-priced, that their stock has is a good price, and trying to get my account focused on, on these stocks and reduce my overall day trading and swing trading habits. So that's what I have for this video. Happy trading.